Hello, Acolytes, and welcome back to Funguary. This is the fourth video I've done on Funguary, so if you haven't seen the first three, you can check them out in the iCard now. Today, I'm going to be talking about days 19 through 24. Usually, I do seven in each video, but for this one, I'm doing six because there will be one final Funguary video coming out with the last four days. So, our first species is the Earth Star. This fungus can be found growing in most parts of Central and North Europe and North America. The earth star grows alone or in small groups on the ground of open woodlands. This mushroom begins with an egg stage. They're small, white spheres that are partially or completely underground. As the fungus matures, the outer layer, or the exoperidium, splits into four to eight pointed segments that flare out to lift and expose the spherical inner spore sac. A pointed hole, known as the peristome, on top of the sac releases spores when the wind blows across the surface, and also puffs of spores are released on impact, especially from the rain, so each rain droplet will release a tiny cloud of spores. It's generally agreed that the Earth Star has no culinary value. It's non-toxic, but it is very tough and fibrous and has almost no flavor. So for this character design, I wanted to lean into a little bit more of a masculine silhouette because most of the dresses and outfits that I've done have been quite feminine. And I thought it would be interesting to make that exoperidium into a set of featured sort of collars on her vest jacket. I also thought it would be interesting to do more of a masculine look, more of a suit vest look because of the neutral colors of the fungus. That definitely lends itself to more of a masculine sort of color palette. So I also leaned into that with the character's strong jaw and short spiky hair. I alluded to the very tip of that spore sac, the peristome with her hair, because that is the darkest point on the fungus. And it's also the darkest point on her character design overall. Also looking closely at the peristome, you can sort of see this almost frayed texture a hair-like texture, so I leaned into that with the spiky hair. Even though her outfit was quite masculine, I still thought I'd give her a nice pair of heels uh, just to add some height. In my mind, I think she's quite short, so giving her the heels gives her a little bit of extra height. I also noticed this spotted flecked pattern on the spore sac inside the Earth Star, and so I added the spotted freckled pattern to her pants as well. So that is Day 19, Earth Star. Day 20 species is the Ophiocordyceps. And if you are a fan of The Last of Us, either the show or the game, you have definitely heard of Cordyceps before. The mutant species of fungus in that game, the spores, they're based on a real kind of fungus. There are more than 400 species in the Cordyceps genus, and they can be found growing in forests all over the world. These fungi spread in a particularly nasty way. Insects and arthropods are infected with the Cordyceps species through its spores. It penetrates their exoskeletons and invades the soft tissue of their bodies. The fungus attaches itself to the insect's nervous system and compels it to find a perfect place for the spores to spread. The insect finds a good vantage point and firmly sinks its jaws into a leaf vein on the north side of a plant. The fungus continues to grow inside the body of the insect, eating all of the soft tissue inside the victim's body until the insect finally dies. At this point, the fungus bursts through the head of the insect with a clubbed-shaped fruiting body, releasing spores into the air in search of new hosts. Cordyceps can't infect humans, and they've actually shown some really promising medicinal properties. It can aid in the management of type 2 diabetes and can slow the growth of tumors and cancer cells. Cordyceps are also the most expensive fungus in the entire world. So obviously for this character, I wanted to make her look sort of infected, maybe a bit controlled. So I gave her a little bit of an off-balance look. Her dress is sort of torn and tattered, like maybe she's been wearing it for quite a long time. I, of course, had to add the fruiting body coming out of her head. I sort of made it into a crown-like tiara on her with the cordyceps coming out of the top. I did change the shape of it a little bit to make it look more like a headpiece instead of just a like club, but I kept the texture of the cordyceps on those spread out petals. I also made sure that she had a very blank neutral expression on her face to add to the idea that she's really being mind controlled. 
This was another fungus with a really neutral color palette, mostly just warm browns. So, so I leaned into that with her color palette and all of the colors for all of the fungi here are comprised of colors directly picked from the reference images. To make her look more infected and zombie-like, and because it seems to be something that I was seeing in photos of the insects that have been infected by the cordyceps, I made her eyes this milky pale white with no iris. I also added some dark circles, some bruising, and some veins to really imply that this fungus has gotten into her system and is infecting every part of it. So that is day 20, Ophiocordyceps. Day 21 is the Tetrapyrgos. This isn't exactly an independent species of mushroom. Tetrapyrgos is a genus of fungi that has at least 12 species, so some of this information will be genus-specific or species-specific. Tetrapyrgos grow in moist, shaded habitats at low elevations. These fungi grow as shell-shaped fruiting bodies in clusters that overlap each other. They can be found growing from leaf litter or twigs in hardwood forests. One of the most notable species is the Tetrapyrgos nigripes, also called the Blackfoot Parachute. This mushroom has a white cap with visible cross veins. In contrast, the stem is black but with small white hairs covering the surface. The caps of this mushroom will develop blue or black spots as they age and can fade to be blue or green overall. A weird distinguishing feature of this mushroom is actually its spores. It has unique tetrahedral shaped spores, which are extremely uncommon. Most spores are spherical. Yeah, microscopically these spores are tetrahedral shaped. It's unknown whether this fungus is edible, but generally it's argued that the mushroom is too small to have any culinary value. It wouldn't be worth harvesting it to try and eat. So for my rendition of the Tetrapyrgos, I immediately thought of a hand fan because of that beautiful shell shape. And I also found this beautiful dress on Pinterest that had this sort of layered fan look to the skirt. And I thought that that would absolutely be perfect, especially because these mushrooms tend to grow in clusters. So it would look like the cluster of mushrooms is growing directly off of her dress. I leaned into this noble ballerina-esque appearance that I was viewing by her holding the hand fan, and I made her legs long and graceful and pointed. The colors on the Tetrapyrgos are pretty one note, they're pretty neutral. I was either seeing yellows and whites, greens and whites, or blues and whites, and I decided to go with blue just because the fact that these mushrooms can sort of go blue with age or develop blue spots. So I figured blue was probably the closest to the true color of this mushroom that I could portray. She is also the only character I've drawn so far who has her eyes closed, which I think is an interesting fun fact. The hardest part of this illustration was getting all of those cross veins to look proper. It was really difficult to add in the detail, and then of course the white highlights, and then a darker shadow in between the valleys that the veins had. So that is Day 21, Tetrapyrgos. Day 22 is the chanterelle mushroom. Chanterelle is another genus with several species of mushroom. These are common in Europe, Asia, North and Central America, and Africa. They tend to grow in clusters in mossy coniferous forests. These mushrooms are orange, yellow, or white, and funnel-shaped. The name chanterelle alludes to this shape, meaning tankard or cup in Greek. On the lower surface, the chanterelle mushroom has false gills. These appear like the gills that many other mushrooms have, but they are actually just wavy wrinkles that run down the full length of the stem. This species emits a fruity aroma that smells like apricots and has a peppery taste. They are considered a delicacy and have been since the 18th century in France. This mushroom was notable for being served to nobility. It is very much edible and people very much do eat it, and it sounds delicious. So for the chanterelle mushroom, I wanted to lean into this sort of noble, glamorous aesthetic without going too far back in time. I considered going with an 18th century French woman look, but instead I decided to go for this more Marilyn Monroe 1950s sort of appearance. I thought the skirt blowing up in the wind suited the funnel shape of the mushroom in an interesting way, and it allowed me to show off those false gills. I really love her color palette. Her colors are so beautiful and bright. 
Once again, all of the colors are picked from the actual reference photos of the chanterelle mushroom. And so that beautiful like bright orange color, the bright yellow of her hair, all of that is actual true to life from the photos of these mushrooms. I really think the colors sort of embody this like golden age of Hollywood as well that she's supposedly from. So that is day 22, Chanterelle. Day 23 is the Macrocybe Titan. This is a species of mushroom native to Florida and Central and South America. These are huge, solid mushrooms that grow in groups in grassy, warm areas. These mushrooms are probably the largest gilled mushroom in all of North America. They have a cap that can measure over a yard across. The largest size reported from this mushroom was 40 inches in diameter. It's no wonder that the name Macrocybe represents this size. Its name is Latin for huge head. This mushroom doesn't contain any classic mushroom toxins, only trace amounts of heavy metals. It's not commonly consumed, but it can be sauteed in butter, or broiled and used like a portobello mushroom. This character once again has a very neutral color palette, but because she is the Titan, of course, I had to make her look absolutely huge. And part of that was making her jacked. Out of all the girls, she is definitely the tallest and also the most muscular. This was sort of an interesting challenge because for these funguaries, I didn't want to overblend too much. I didn't want to be too soft in my art, but I really was not sure how else to make the muscles. So she has a, definitely a bit more of a blended look to her skin than some of the other women do. I think they turned out looking all right. I don't draw a lot of muscular people, but I think the muscles turned out relatively accurate. I also definitely had to give her an outfit that would show off all of her muscles. So I gave her these tiny little shorts so you can see her big giant muscle thighs uh, and this short crop tank top so you can see both her biceps and her abs. She's also the only girl I've drawn who is in socks. Yep, she's not wearing any shoes. She's just wearing socks. So she's quite casual. Something that I really wanted to add to this character, but I really struggled to add and... Uh, I, I didn't end up adding it in the end, but I really wanted to. I wanted to give her stretch marks on sort of her thighs and her stomach because of the cracked cap of the Macrocybe Titan in this reference photo that I'm using. So I try a couple times to give her stretch marks, but I've just never drawn those on a character before. And they were coming out a little bit too much like scars, and that's not really what I was intending. So uh, I removed them for now, but who knows, when I learn to draw them, I might come back and give her some stretch marks. Even though she's big and muscular, I didn't want to lean too far into the masculine aesthetic with her. I felt that that was a little bit cliched, and I wanted to still make her appear feminine, even though she's got these big giant muscles. And so I leaned into that with her sort of softer jawline and big soft curls, long ponytail, that that kind of thing. So even though she is big and muscular and strong, she's not necessarily viewed as masculine. So that is day 23, the Macrocybe Titan. Finally for this video is day 24, the Pink Oyster. This fungus is also known as the Salmon Oyster, Flamingo Oyster, or Strawberry Oyster, and easy to see why it's due to its bright, vibrant pink color. These mushrooms grow in big clusters on decaying hardwood trees in tropical regions throughout the world in spring and fall, but especially in Indonesia. The flesh of this mushroom is initially white, but as the fungus matures, it begins to become the iconic bright pink color. As the mushroom ages, this bright pink will turn into a bit more of a milky pink. This mushroom will actually kill and eat nematodes, which are small roundworms, and it will also eat bacteria, which makes them one of the only carnivorous mushroom species. Pink oysters have a unique scent that's described as smelling like licorice or anise. They are edible and are commonly used in cooking. They're described as having a meaty, chewy texture and a seafood-like smell once cooked. They're sour when raw, but when you cook them, they have a woody flavor. Unfortunately, they do lose their intensely bright pink color once cooked, so that's a bit of a bummer. Obviously, for the pink oyster, I had to give her a whole bunch of overlapping ruffles on both her collar and her dress just to make her look like the absolute overflow of these mushrooms that you can see in my reference here. I think you can more see it in the collar of her dress than the folds of the other part, but I do think they still allude back to that idea. 
I also love her color palette. It's so fun and so pink, and it was very, very fun to work with. I was also lucky enough to find an image of these mushrooms with a little bit more of an orange texture. So that let me differentiate her hair and her skin a little bit from the rest of her dress and outfit, which was definitely a challenge with this mushroom because it is so monochromatic. I also love her attitude. She seems like she would be very fun to be around. She's got sort of a mischievous look in her eyes, so I like that very much. She is part of the sort of sweeter group of mushrooms that we have here that includes the chanterelle and the macrocybe titan. So that is day 24, Pink Oyster. I'd like to thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. I put out new videos every single Saturday, and I'm also always putting out YouTube shorts. If you'd like to see more of what I'm working on while I'm working on it, follow me on all my social media. I am After Plague on Twitch, Instagram, and TikTok, and I am After underscore Plague on Twitter. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope to see you back for the last installment of Funguary, and I hope you survive this post-plague world.